the show, uh, Lil Peep, man. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean? So one of the things that <clears throat> kind of like Lil Peep is a, uh, I would say he's like kind of like, I don't know, this is kind of disrespectful to Kurt Cobain, but kind of like the Kurt Cobain of this generation. I, I wouldn't say it's disrespectful. I think he's one of the most iconic uh, up-and-coming uh, well, he's not- <laughs> musicians at the time when okay. he was when he was yeah. happening. And he started a movement, which is actually, I think, very similar to ours, where he wore his pain on the outside and was not afraid to tell anybody anything. And I really respected that. He's since passed, but... Uh, yeah, man. I mean, I saw that documentary. Um, everybody's everybody's every- Everything. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. Everything. And honestly, man, it touched me so much. And I was just thinking about you, Dave, the whole time I was uh, doing this. Because I related a lot to this guy. I'm like, man, this is a guy that... The reason why the movie's called Everybody's Everything is because he wanted to be everybody's everything, actually. He yeah. was there for everybody, actually. And then uh, at one point, he had a house where he had a, maybe like 20, 30 artists just living there all rent free basically and they were all living off him yeah. and uh it was just wow. toxic environment and i was like Oof. shit i've actually that's a, that's a... but the beautiful thing and i got chills look at that because <laughs> ser- i mean seriously because if you there's a there's a scene in that film and i'm gonna forward it to you where he's on stage at a club and he's singing he's doing his thing but what he's saying to a room full of strangers is so vulnerable and so transparent mm. and so honest, everybody in that room was riveted, and that was his his way of doing that cognitive thing that we're talking about, mm. that that way of sharing. Yeah. But he was not afraid to say, "Here's what's going on with me," and he noticed that everybody around him was kind of going through that too. He became kind of the, you know, the icon of that. Of being able to express his own vulnerability and, and sadness, being, ex- being accepted, and being accepted for it, being being held up as, as as a result of it, because he was finally saying the reason why you bring up the Kurt Cobain comparison, because here comes along a guy who's finally saying all the shit that all the kids are thinking, right, yeah. and nobody's saying it, yeah. Right. And then you know, <clears throat> teach if you, uh, we'll put up a picture. Oh, there it is. Okay. In the video, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just saying, he, this guy has like tattoos all over his face. He like looks really, really scary. And then there was another guy in the um, uh, documentary called like um, "I Love Mockin'" or something like that. And he was saying that he was like, "Dude, little peep, he looked really scary on the outside, but he was really nice on the inside." While this guy was very mean on the inside, but he looked very nice on the outside. There's always this duality of right. But artists. the tattoos on his <laughs> face say "Cry Baby." They say "Eat Cake." Like they are. He's wearing his pain on the outside. So to the, the random observer, it looks like maybe this guy's tatted up over all over the face. He did time, whatever. But if you look at what those tattoos are saying, they're little sad faces. They're like he's, he's projecting his own insecurity and vulnerability through his music, through his tattoos, through the art. Dave, 